I've got um, I've just got a question on top of that, Gail. Myself, Jules, and Shane, we believe that you at at, what, at a certain point in your career, you, you need a little bit of luck, um, like that little Oof. that little slice of luck. Um, <laughs> you know, we always talk Oof. about, say, for example, you're coming through Barcelona's academy and you want to be a number ten. And, you know, it's pretty much going to be impossible for you to to take Messi's spot, you know. So you need that little bit mm-hmm. of a look. And I, I just want to ask you a question. Was there any part in your career where you had that little slice of luck where obviously you got your chance and then you would have took it with both hands? But did you? can you think back of anything in your career where you got a little bit lucky? So I have a, I have a saying that um, the good cocktail, the good combination to become professional is a lot of work a little bit of talent and a huge amount of luck and if you go through what i've been through my experience is nothing special but every single moment where something had to happen it happened and it starts from when i was 13 in that pre-formation school um i grew up really late and I was a really slow player when I was younger because I was growing. Slow. So no I was out. I was coming back. Yeah, I know. I know. But <laughs> if you, if you, I mean, you know, it was like, so I'm, I'm part of this big setup of the best 20 player in the area. So I was the best player in my club. And I get to this school where I'm just randomly here. And there is like maybe 15 players better than me. They are stronger. They are bigger. They are faster. Uh, the jump higher because at the time you know the 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 test to come in was like to do uh, 50 keep up with your left 50 keep up with your right 50 with your head 50 with your knees so all that i was fine because i always had the ball in my hand and i was good but everything that was evolving sprint jump at the time i remember we had throwings you know so you had to, <laughs> to be able to throw the ball as far as possible that's that's 25 years ago you know yeah. um yeah. and all that obviously if you want me to have a challenge with Saul Campbell, I will always lose because <laughs> he's heavier than me, he's stronger. That's, that's, that's physically impossible to, to match that. So um, I got into that school and I just felt that I was way behind, way behind. And then, so we are here for two years. The first year is just, you know, you just go through the days. But the second year is important because at the end of the second year, you have a competition, a tournament with all the preschool in France. And it's all the best players and obviously all the scouts from all the clubs in France and in Europe are coming. I'm not part of that team. I'm not part. I'm not good enough. You know, at the time I was playing number 10, believe it or not, I was number 10 (laughs) and I'm not good. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I'm not good. You know, I'm not good enough. I'm injured. I come back from injury. I'm injured. I come back from injury. And then all of a sudden, nearly the end of the season, second season, I come back after uh, maybe five, five weeks off. Uh, I do a speed test and I'm like the second fastest in the group when I was the lowest, you know, I was the slowest. So from that, I start to improve. And then eventually I get my class. I get my, my, my position to go into that tournament. What happened is that the number 10 got injured. So there's only me to play because we are not a big numbers. It's only 20 players. I play. And that's where you say, you know, you have to grab your chance. I play amazing. And I'm the best player in my, in my, in my team. We yeah, go to no. the semi-final, we lose, but then people see me, you know? Yeah. So I signed for Cannes, I go to Cannes, and that's only a few months later when I signed for Cannes. So that's after the summer. I go there as a number 10, and I remember the coach, I'm still in touch with him, he starts to say, okay, defend, defensive player, you go on my left, offensive player, you go on my right. So I'm a number 10. I go on his right, right? <laughs> because I'm a big number 10. I just finished <laughs> the season and I'm, I'm big. And he's looking at you know his paper and he goes, cliche. And I'm like, yeah, it's me. He said, what are you doing here? I said, what are you send you know forwards? And he said, no, no, you're a defender. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, left back. <laughs> so I go left back. <laughs> but listen, I'm not joking. So I go there and I found myself second choice left back behind a guy called Gregory. I remember him. A little guy, a little bit overweighted, but he was stronger than me. And he was going to start the season. But what happened? One week before the first game of the season, our centre-back got injured. He, he fractured his jaw. So there is nobody to play centre-back. And he plays me centre-back. And I was, it was me, the fast little one. And the right uh, centre-back was uh, a guy from Avignon. 
strong. He was strong like Yapstan. So all the long balls and header, it was for him. And everything on the floor, on the ground, it was me. So what happened? We played six months like that. I go with the national team of France under 15. And I'm regarded as the next big thing in France for my generation. Wow. That's and, wow. But it's not finished. I'll give you another <laughs> one. Oh, so wow. we go through the season. We go through the season. And then the second season, I never touched the first team. You know, I never trained with the first team. And um, the coach called me after the season and he said, okay, you have to come back earlier than your, your teammate because you're going to train with the first team. We need players. So we go and listen to that. There were already two left backs. The number one got a red card from last season, so he suspended for three games. So the second, second choice left back is going to play. But this guy fractured his ankle and wow. he's out for six weeks. It was meant so to be, Gail. 16 years old guy play there and my first six game I'm man of the match I was playing that was first div third division in France so that was a low level but I was 16 and then I will push it a little bit more so I played <laughs> those games man of the match and Damien Komoli who is at the time the scout for Arsenal, Arsenal yeah. is from Nice and Nice is only half an hour from Cannes so he hears about a young player from 16 playing for Cannes and he's coming back every weekend to Cannes to Nice because his family is based in Nice so when he comes to see his family, he comes to see me. Wow. And that was it. Yeah. And you know, I can, I, can, I can give you so many things that happen. And like you said, you need to grab your, your, yeah. your chance. But if I don't have all those wow. little moments, perhaps you don't do it, you know? So that it's was... long. Sorry, guys. But no, no. No, it's a, a great question, story. You know? I'm just yeah. looking at my screen just like it's, yeah, because, you know, I've, I gave you an amazing instruction, but mate, you're one of the best left backs the Premier League's ever seen, you know, and, um, you know, you, people might not know that story of the, the look that you need. And yeah, that's just really incredible for us to hear that story. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners that, that are out there that keep having setbacks, you just got to keep going, you know, like, and, and the big Definitely. thing that Gail mentioned there is you, you, took, you took your opportunity with both hands and just didn't look back, you know. That's it. That's just incredible. Yes, guys, head over to the Jonah 101 podcast on Apple iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud to listen to the part one of Gail Clichy. He gives us an insight into his football career, how he came across Jonah 101 football training, joining Arsenal, meeting Arsene Wenger, and being part of the Invincibles. Don't miss it.